Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video we'll talk about some of the most commonly used painkillers in dentistry as most of the patients visiting the dental clinic or OPD almost all of them present with some kind of pain that is related to tooth whether it can be uh, pain due to any idiopathic reason, pain due to caries, root canal treatment or some periodontally weakened tooth. So pain is one of the most common complaint of any patient visiting the dental clinic. So it's of utmost importance for dental students as well as dental surgeons to know which are the most commonly prescribed painkillers. There are some other rare prescribed painkillers which are uh, kept for severe dental pain or sometimes when the normal painkillers are not working. So we'll talk about in detail different painkillers that are commonly prescribed in dentistry. So let's get started. Now when the patient visits a dental clinic or OPD, pain is one of the most common or you can say is the most common complaint of a patient. So there are different etiologies or causes that cause pain to a patient. Now that's the responsibility of the dental surgeon to identify why the patient is experiencing pain. It can be due to most commonly caries or when the caries has invaded the pulp thereby uh, causing the patient to experience severe pain and then the dental surgeon deciding to do RCT which is, which is called as root canal treatment. These are the most common complaints of a patient but there are other causes as well. And patient can experience pain pre-operatively before the, uh, the uh, treatment is performed as well as post-operatively when the treatment is completed. So the dental surgeon has to prescribe uh, analgesics or painkillers after the patient has been dismissed of the clinic and these painkillers are routinely prescribed to the patients because patient will experience some kind of pain after the treatment has been performed. Here are the some of the most commonly prescribed painkillers or analgesics in dental treatment. It includes firstly ibuprofen, then we have acetaminophen or you can also call it as paracetamol, we have naproxen, Diclofenac, which is in, available in two variants, in diclofenac sodium and diclofenac potassium, and finally serapeptase. Now, some of the most commonly done dental procedures is when patient presents with toothache, resulting is in some form of exodontia, or patient requiring RCT, implants, gum surgeries, crowns, dental fillings, and sometimes even anxiety of the patient is so high that it makes the dental surgeon prescribe him or her any painkillers. Firstly talking about ibuprofen which is the most commonly prescribed analgesic along with paracetamol. So ibuprofen belongs to a class of drug which is called as NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So it belongs to NSAIDs. Talking about the mode of action of ibuprofen, it basically inhibits the production of prostaglandins. Now when the body experiences pain, there is production of prostaglandin which makes the patient experiencing pain which can be either mild or severe depending on the etiology that resulted in pain. So the main mode of action of ibuprofen or in case of any ANSAID it's basically inhibition of the production of prostaglandins. Now the main indications for prescribing ibuprofen when we are talking about dentistry is related to any toothache, patient experiencing fever along with some body pain because Normally patient experiences toothache but if the pain is so severe then fever can also arise. In that case along with painkillers antibiotics are also prescribed. Now talking about the adult dose normally about 200 mg to 600 mg in between this range the adult is given ibuprofen. Normally 400 mg is most commonly prescribed which is given 8 hourly which can be given either 2 times or 3 times a day. In talking about child dose, 5 to 10 mg per kg body weight has to be noted when giving ibuprofen to a child or in syrup form which is most commonly prescribed because the child has some tendency or some difficulty in swallowing these pills. So it's mostly given in syrup form which is 100 ml per 5 mg syrup which is commonly prescribed to a child. Now there are some contraindications which has to be kept in mind before you can prescribe any patient with ibuprofen. That is patient suffering from hypertension because it raises your blood pressure. Secondly, peptic ulcer because ibuprofen tends or any ANSAID tends to increase bleeding from these ulcers. 
because NSAIDs are mostly excreted by uh, this renal system so when this renal system is not working properly this drug cannot be excreted of the, out of the body so you shouldn't prescribe patients with renal failure this ibuprofen and secondly GI bleeding because as we have discussed with ulcer when there is already bleeding present so you shouldn't prescribe this because it will increase bleeding and the high risk group are those drugs that shouldn't be given ibuprofen at all and in this case it is neonates secondly talking about acetaminophen or more commonly known as paracetamol along with ibuprofen is one of the most commonly prescribed painkillers or analgesics to dental patients now the mode of action is it, it's basically centrally acting that is it acts in the brain and also well, it's mostly its mode of action is debatable but most of the researchers agree that it inhibits prostaglandins because there are different kinds of prostaglandin and those prostaglandin which cause pain these are inhibited by acetaminophen indications re related to dentistry are when the patient suffers from anitotic sometimes ear pain headache and fever as well talking about adult dose normally 500 to 1000 mg acetaminophen or paracetamol is given the normal uh, paracetamol that the patient takes is 500 mg it should be given 6 hourly you ca it, ca it can be either given after 6 hours you can take one in morning one in uh, the evening and one in uh, at night time and the maximum dose of paracetamol should be around should be 4000 mg or 4 grams because if you exceed the dose above this it will cause damage to your liver known as hepat hepatotoxicity so you shouldn't increase your dose above 5 grams because it will damage your liver if you exceed this so the so paracetamol shouldn't be given more than six for six tablets for any patient per day because eight is the limit so we do not cross the limit so we give patients maximum six tablets divided three times a day to a patient and talking about child dose because paracetamol is one of the most safest drug in in medicine so paracetamol is commonly prescribed to children given in 10 to 15 mg per body weight of the patient and it is, it is also available in syrup form and most of the children are given in syrup form which is 160 mg per 5 ml in a uh, teaspoon given 6 hourly. Patients suffering from hypersensitivity reaction which is mostly uh, skin reaction, allergic reactions most common it's called as allergic reaction. So patients suffering from allergic reactions they shouldn't be given paracetamol because it, it will lead to some kind of life threatening reaction less commonly prescribed as compared to paracetamol and ibuprofen is naproxen naproxen also belongs to the class of NSAIDs like ibuprofen and its mode of action is the same as all NSAIDs is, that is by inhibition of prostaglandin production for dentistry it's given when patients suffer from entotic fever and body pain now for adults 250 to 500 mg of naproxen is given which is given 12 hourly that is the patient uh, is given this tablet two times per day and for patients suffering from chronic pain it should be taken after you have eaten either lunch or dinner now for child below the age of 12 years old naproxen is not given only for the children that are above the age of 12 years and older they are given this naproxen and that is 220 mg every 8 to 12 hours that is same for adults that is after two times per day Patients suffering from hypersensitivity reaction should not be given this naproxen. It can lead to life-threatening reactions. The high-risk group that shouldn't be given naproxen at all are pediatric patients that we have discussed before. Children of age 12 years old or less, they shouldn't be given this naproxen. Pregnant females should not also be not given. Patients with kidney dysfunction, liver dysfunction and cardiac patients because it tends to worsen this underlying disorders now talking about diclofenac it's available in two forms either diclofenac sodium and diclofenac potassium we'll talk about the differences between these two uh, forms of drugs it's not it is somewhat important but not that important so diclofenac belongs to the class of ANSIDs the mode of action of the diclofenacs like all of the ANSID is by inhibition of prostaglandins the main indication related to dentistry is toothache, sometimes adenosis and inflammation and patients with post-op pain. Now in adults 
it's given in 50 mg dosage 8 hourly for children it's normally avoided because it's not very safe to give to these children so for children mostly ibuprofen and paracetamol is given now talking about contraindication like all ansets it should be avoided in patients with GI ulceration for example GI bleeding and peptic ulcer because it tends to worsen this already present condition and patients presenting with hypersensitivity reaction Declofenac should also not be given to patients who are pregnant and also presenting with kidney dysfunction now talking about some differences the main difference between diclofenac sodium and diclofenac potassium is that diclofenac potassium tends to absorb from the gut more quickly as compared to diclofenac sodium so when diclofenac potassium is absorbed more quickly it will exert its effect more quickly so it's given in that condition where patients pain has to be resolved quickly so that's the main difference between diclofenac sodium and diclofenac potassium now talking about the last drug that is most, com most commonly prescribed in dentistry when patient present with pain is serapeptase. It belongs to a class of proteolytic enzyme. The mode of action is mostly inhibition of prostaglandins which cause pain. The main indication of serapeptase is when patients present with inflammation or any sort of swelling because swelling tends to lead to pain. So serapeptase is given when patient presents with pain in, or in swelling so that to resolve that pain. For adults 5 to 10 mg is given 8 hourly. Now serapeptase is not recommended in child age group because it's detrimental for the children. Contraindications are patients presenting with hypersensitivity reaction and those suffering from underlying coagulation disorders. Now the high risk groups in which serapeptase should not be given are pregnant females, patients presenting with liver malfunction, geriatrics which are older age group patients and patients with kidney dysfunction. So this was all about the most commonly prescribed painkillers or analgesics when patients present with their complaint of pain in dental clinics or OPD. So I hope this video was useful for you and so and if you like this video please like share and subscribe and thank you for watching this video.